Narcissists hate this ancient hack. How Stoicism ruins their love bombing mind games. Shrugging off narcissist love bombers with Stoic apathia. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Marcus Aurelius. Love bombing an attempt to influence a person by lavish demonstrations of attention and affection. To the recipient, it feels genuine but is often a manipulative ploy. In romantic relationships, it manifests as constant texting, gifts, and proclamations of being soulmates early on. Friends may exhibit similar behaviors, seeming inseparably close in the beginning. This surplus of affection can leave one addicted to the attention and validation. While pleasant at first, it becomes demanding over time. Setting boundaries becomes difficult when facing hostility or withdrawal. Thus, one may find themselves trapped in a cycle of emotional highs and lows, struggling to reclaim stability. The Stoic philosophers of ancient Greece offers an antidote to this emotional turbulence. By following their teachings, one can develop an inner resilience, shielding themselves from manipulation. Let us explore how a stoic mindset empowers one to respond rather than react when confronted by the assault of love bombing. Lesson 1. Focus on what you can control. The stoic philosopher Epictetus said, Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and some things are not. When love bombed, one feels controlled by the bomber's constant demands for attention. This hijacks peace of mind. Stoicism says to ignore what lies outside your influence and focus solely on your perceptions and actions. For instance, the love bomber's behaviors are not in your control, but how you interpret them is. Do you obsess over their affection or recognize it as a transient state? By focusing inward on managing your perspectives versus trying to control others, you maintain self-mastery. Before diving into lesson, two beware attachments to externals. I encourage you to watch our other video on love bombing. Me getting love bombed, what's not normal dating, a narcissist. There's a link in the description below where you can access it. Gaining awareness of common love bombing manipulation strategies is key for protecting your peace and self-worth when interacting with narcissistic personalities. Feel empowered knowing these tactics so you can establish healthier boundaries. I also kindly ask that you support this community by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. Your engagement allows me to keep creating empowering content for conscious survivors aiming to positively impact the world after enduring narcissistic abuse. Now on to lesson two beware attachments to externals where we'll explore specific narcissistic love bombing behaviors more closely as well as tips for not getting swayed by the illusion. Knowledge is power, so let's continue shedding light on this challenging interpersonal dynamic together. Lesson two, beware attachments to externals. Another stoic principle goes, if you depend too much on anything else, you make yourself subject to fortune. When love bombed, there's a danger of becoming emotionally attached to the affection and validation. This places your sense of self-worth in someone else's hands. The Stoics warn against this dependency on transient externals, instead saying, true stability comes from within. So if a lover suddenly becomes cold, the Stoic would remain unperturbed. They know their self-value persists regardless of one person's whims. Comparatively, the non-Stoic may desperately try to reclaim their former's favor. Lesson three, develop self-sufficiency. The philosopher Seneca said that because we cannot control or rely on external events for lasting happiness, we should reduce our needs to the smallest possible amount rather than increasing our means to supply them. Stoics strive to need little, nurturing independence and self-reliance. Contrast this to how the love bomber fosters dependency through excessive attention. The bombers implicitly says, you need me and my validation to be happy. The Stoic rejects this mind game. They provide their own stability. So when affection is withdrawn, they carry on unfazed. They may appreciate it when present, but do not structurally rely on it. Lesson four, respond thoughtfully, not reactively. Another maxim goes mind creates our reality. 
Where mind goes, energy flows. Stoics train their mind to respond thoughtfully versus reactively to events. Picture a couple where one gets upset any time their partner is busy. They hound them for attention and make accusations of being ignored. The partner feels guilty and overwhelmed. Now imagine the stoic alternative. When the partner is busy, they give them space versus getting upset. By responding consciously after reflection, not reactively in the moment, they reduce drama and uphold the health of the relationship. Lesson 5. Set Boundaries Unapologetically The philosopher Musonius Rufus said protect your own good in all that you do. Stoics know self-preservation comes before people-pleasing. They set clear boundaries to prevent being exploited. For example, perhaps a friend constantly texts to make plans. At first, you oblige. But it becomes excessive, intruding on your other commitments. The non-Stoic may have difficulty saying no, trying not to seem rude. This breeds resentment over time. Comparatively, the Stoic gracefully establishes boundaries. They know refusing unreasonable requests protects their interests while fostering honest connections. Setting boundaries reduces manipulations. Lesson 6. Value Substance Over Flattery Seneca stated, Reputation and prestige have the appearance but not the reality of virtue. Stoics focus on cultivated wisdom and good character versus superficial validation. Love bombers shower charming words, putting one on a pedestal. They excessively praise looks, talents, or status, yet it is all theatrics that quickly fade. However, the Stoic sees beyond the flattery to discern genuine care and connection. They value emotional authenticity. So while enjoying tasteful compliments, they do not become dependent on them. Lesson 7. Cultivate Self-Awareness Marcus Aurelius said dig within. Within is the wellspring of good, and it is always ready to bubble up if you just dig. Stoics frequently self-reflect to gain wisdom and self-mastery, essential for emotional resilience. Imagine a colleague overly praises your work. They repeatedly call you the best on the team. At first, you feel appreciated, but their obsession seems exaggerated, even manipulative. Rather than simply reacting, the Stoic pauses to digest this situation. Through self-examination, they realize this colleague excessively showers everyone with praise and attention. They conclude it reveals more about the giver's insecurities than being purely genuine. By looking inward versus outward for answers, the Stoic gains clarity. They continue working diligently without needing constant validation. Lesson 8. Distinguish Love from Manipulation Epictetus said, He is free who lives as he wishes to live, who is neither subject to compulsion nor to hindrance. Stoics prize their autonomy in forging fulfilling connections. Love bombers finally disguise control as care at first. But by moving fast, proclaiming you're my whole world, they actually restrict your freedom. Their love is on their terms, demanding reciprocation of intense intimacy immediately. Refusal elicits retaliation via emotional withdrawal or outbursts. In contrast, the Stoic moves slowly, carefully evaluating if a suitor wishes to control or nurture their autonomy. The bomber seeks dependence, the lover interdependence. This distinction manifests through patient courtship. Ultimately, true bonds empower versus dominate one's identity. Lesson 9. Master Non-Attachment Marcus Aurelius stated, Misfortune nobly born is good fortune. Adversity is inevitable. Stoics focus not on avoiding distress, but building resilience to thrive through challenges. When a lover disappears after previously showering one with affection, the non-Stoic becomes distraught. They cannot let go of conditioned hopes and expectations. Comparatively, the Stoic feels disappointed but not devastated. By not cementing expectations or clinging to desires, they embrace reality's impermanence with flexible optimism. Letting go liberates them from emotional dependency. They do not compromise their well-being for external validation. With non-attachment, Relief replaces resentment or bitterness. Lesson 10. 
tend your inner garden. The philosopher Seneca shared a powerful analogy. The mind must be given relaxation. It will rise improved and sharper after a good break. Just as rich fields must not be forced, so constant drilling will sap your mental vigor. Allow your mind some relaxation. By continuously training their mindset, Stoics cultivate an oasis of tranquility internally. From this place of inner stability, they act with wisdom towards others and changing circumstances. Tending this inner garden becomes the primary focus. Events with difficult people or in the outside world occur, but do not dominate one's existence. The soul is nourished from within. This fortress of peaceful being remains unshaken against attempts to hijack equilibrium through emotional manipulation. Unbalanced people come and go, but inner harmony persists. To conclude, Stoic teachings provide a framework to immunize oneself from the assaults of love bombing and other ploys by manipulative narcissists. By directing energy inwards to self-mastery versus trying to control difficult people, the Stoic artfully maintains their state of inner freedom no matter what turbulence surrounds them. The key is remembering that true stability and happy connections come from living by moral principles and nurturing inner growth. One then interacts with the world from a place of self-sufficient wisdom. External events alone cannot tilt the mind when one governs the ultimate center, the deep sense of self. There is a profound yet subtle strength cultivated in times of solitude away from the noise. One emerges renewed with greater emotional resilience by setting proper boundaries and not overindulging in pleasure or pain, the Stoic finds peace and purpose. They master the present moment detached from past and future. Everything vital is rooted inside, not contingent on others' behaviors. Whether you are already practicing Stoicism or not, Stoic philosophy has been incorporated into many teachings and wisdom traditions over the ages. If you have dealt with narcissists, Surely some of these timeless principles resonated as you navigated those challenges. So I welcome you to share in the comments which Stoic strategies have you found most helpful in maintaining boundaries and inner peace when confronted by narcissistic personalities and behaviors. Was there a lesson here that you plan to implement next time difficult situations arise? Even if you are new to Stoic wisdom, reflect on what principles stand out as empowering should you encounter turbulent emotional manipulations in the future. By learning from each other's journeys, we can continue cultivating consciousness and resilience. Your perspectives truly matter. They not only provide insight for others, but motivate me to keep creating content merging ageless wisdom with modern contexts. I aim for these videos to be positive contributions rather than mere entertainment. So please comment on what lessons resonate and how you envision applying them. Together, we can support each other in developing inner freedom and fulfilling connections, no matter the challenges that come our way.